afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Design Academy's A Look in the Lab. Today, we have a panel of experts from Desktop Health who are here to talk a little bit about what's happening over at Desktop Health and their 3D printing system featuring the Einstein printers and Flexera Smile Ultra Plus. So today I have Chris Bolum. He is the director of the Dental Application Engineers. Thank you for coming in on for us today, Chris. Um, we have Ash Teague, and he is a dental application engineer. And Matt Lintz, who is the customer support specialist for Desktop Health. Together, they have spent years in dental laboratories and are now part of the Desktop Metal um, Desktop Health team. So I just want to welcome everybody. Thank you so much for taking your time out and um, giving our customers an inside look on what you guys have coming and what you have done with Flexera uh, Smile Ultra Plus, as long as the uh, desktop, uh, desktop Einstein printers. Hey, Thank great, you Thank us. you for having us. Thank you. The guys will be taking questions at the end of the presentation. So if you wouldn't mind, all you have to do is type them in at the bottom where it says Q&A. But we want this to be interactive with you. And we have put together a couple of poll questions and I'll be launching them throughout. So the first one that I have, and I'm gonna launch it right now, we'd like to know a little bit about you. So we'd like to know if you are currently 3D printing in your lab. If you wouldn't mind just answering that question for us. And I'm just gonna to get to it, Chris, with you. So sure. I, I spoke about a little bit of a reformulation of Flexera Smile Ultra Plus. Um, how was the mat material science of this uh, changed compared to the previous versions of Flexera? Sure. Yeah, I'm going to share my screen here and kind of uh, preface that with our ecosystem and how we arrived at the reformulation. Um, so here, showing a little bit of the background of desktop metal, desktop health, and what we're founded on, right? So we're trying to build an ecosystem that complements itself. Right, we've we know 3D printing's been around in our industry. We've been familiar with prototyping the models, but we're really looking for this end use application um, and these future products that we can use in the medical device space. Right, so DM has organized this ecosystem uh, built on the legacy of what uh, many of you might know as Envision Tech. Uh, so 20 plus years of R and D, and that's hardware, that's software, and that's obviously materials. Um, some key points here, you know, DM is a heavily scientific organization. 20% of us are engineers and scientists. Um, so to continuing to develop those materials, publish papers, and register those patents, right? Uh, we know Envision Tech is the uh, inventor of uh, DLP technology. So when we look at our material portfolio, we look to bring something end use, like I mentioned. And we came with Flexera Smile Ultra Plus. Um, and we wanted this to be a temporary and final solution for printed teeth. Um, and when we look at strength and the formulation, we looked at different ways in the chemistry. How do we get it stronger? How do we increase the work fracture numbers? How do we increase the wear resistance? Well, we found through our development that when we take the monomers that's in that resin and we produce and, and solidify them into long strains to make a polymer that made it stronger, right? We chose to use the 385 nanometer wavelength in the technology uh, when we're converting this to solid. So that's the projector light, that's the strength. Mm -hmm. um, and when you think about these polymers being long and cross-linked, we're reducing the gaps in between the polymers. Um, and that makes it perform more like a ceramic. It gives it better aesthetics, better performance. So we really saw this as a benefit. Um, and as a side effect, right, we see this fracture resistance, total work fracture. Um, and, and we were very surprised with this outcome, right? If you look at some of the comparison materials there, uh, work fracture is a measure of uh, strength over an area. Uh, so mm -hmm. when we think about the strength of zirconia and Emacs, we're, look, we're, we're trying to get that, that mix between is it gonna is it gonna withstand and is it gonna be strong? Um, is it gonna function in the mouth? Uh, we also found with these polymers, 
uh, we really got a really great uh, resistance to moisture, which we know is good, right? Uh, too much moisture in there, you're going to get bacteria, you're going to get buildup, mm -hmm. discoloration, loss of aesthetics. Uh, really good performance there uh, we're seeing. Um, you can see the test there we use as a water absorption test. Um, mm -hmm. Two days at 37C, um, different types of medium. See how much of that is leaching inside. Um, like to share a little bit about the wear studies as well. Uh, this was an independent study that was done in 2022 by the University of Alabama, where they okay. took similar printed resins and actually put it through a wear cycle. Um, it simulates 400,000 shoes. And what do we want to point here, point into, is the small numbers are good. Uh, this means that there's less wear over that cycle. Um, I have a sh little short video here that I want to share about how that goes through and, and how that test is performed. They take these devices here and they simulate the wear in the mouth. And you can see those little printed samples there under some moisture. And then they actually take an overlay with a scan and measure how much on that given volume was reduced. So you can see Flexera performed really well there on the volumetric reduction. Very little was removed uh, during that testing. And where is, where is very important when you're talking about, you know, denture teeth and uh, absolutely. So then we're, we're met with those tests, right? We have a material that we think performs well. Uh, it's got good work fracture, good moisture resistance, but then how do we apply it to the dental market? Um, of course, we came out with the six shades for the tooth material, right? Because we wanna have this match close to the Vita shades uh, that are very common uh, when you come across. So those were an area of focus. And then what I wanna mention on the base, uh, material as well is we're really striving to match those lucitone shade guides because um, that's a very common you know get the order script in you're looking at those colors so we're constantly trying to get that uh, precise dental use uh, application on these materials here awesome are we switching to another slide Chris uh, nope that's that for oh. those Okay, great. So that was very informative. Thank you so much. I want to now switch over to Ash. Ash, can you tell me a little bit about the applications for Flex uh, Flexera Smile Ultra Plus that were validated? Yeah, so we have uh, FDA approval for full crowns, um, permanent crowns, and temporary crowns um, for both the anterior and posterior. It's also approved for inlays, onlays, and overlays. Um, veneers as well. Now, when it comes to bridges, you can do up to six unit bridges um, splinted with no ponics. You can mm -hmm. do six unit bridge with one ponic, and then you can do six up to six unit bridge, but the ponics cannot be side to side. They cannot be adjacent. Um, we also have approval for denture teeth, um, the monolithic, the monoblock dentures, and partial dentures as well. Awesome. Now we spoke about some of the properties that Flexera uh, has, possesses. What about translucency, Chris? How translucent are, you know, the teeth once they're printed? And, and could you give us a little bit about that? Yeah, something we looked at was uh, with the initial tooth resins that hit the market, we noticed because 3D printing uses one resin in the material tank at a time, mm -hmm. we got very opaque um, results. So we had to add in ceramic fillers. So as the tooth would graduate from the margin up to the incisal edge, some of that ceramic properties would come out and, and shine through on these. Um, so that addition of the ceramic brings out the, the incisal translucency. We have a good picture of it here. Um, you can see as, as that tooth builds up from the margin, it starts to, to let some light through and, and give some of those beautiful aesthetics that you have, almost a gradient, not quite like milled uh, multilayer PMMA, but it's a good, a good step forward in terms of ceramic loading. Yeah, it definitely gives it more of a lifelike look to it, right? The transition. Yeah, for sure. You're having everything, Usually, it just doesn't, it's not very appealing, you know? 
Yeah, and usually you see that in layered products or multi-layered pucks. Um, mm -hmm. You you haven't really seen aesthetics like um, translucency like this in printed products till now. It looks really and, beautiful. It, it, and I do see a, a question there about creating the shoot the uh, tooth shade gradient from gingiva to occlusal. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get some help there with your natural thickness. Um, so we know that you know at the gingiva it's going to be thicker. At the incisal, it's going to be thinner. Uh, but these resins uh, operate like PMMA. They're very, very similar to PMMA. So they're compatible with the UV curable stain and glaze kits that's used on PMMA today. So you can add additional gradients and build in uh, more uh, features there um, with, with similar type products. And yeah, it, it looks really good. Matt, can you discuss the aesthetics as as the restorations appear lifelike as well? I know that you speak to a lot of customers with your uh, type of work that you're doing with desktop health. So what is it that the customers are asking for? And are you delivering that with Flexera? So basically they ask the difference between aesthetics from, you know, denture wise, it'd be carded teeth or, you know, if it was milled, it'd be the multi-layering. Mm -hmm. uh, so between you know, there could be multiple levels of aesthetics with these, you know, from just the regular basic print, a polished tooth has that ceramic in it. So it kind of has that nice shine and has that little edge that was just shown in that previous picture. Um, as a, when I mean by levels, you could actually, anything like here can be added to this. So you could stain them, you could glaze them, you could uh, add grotty to like the dentures and, you know, customize all you want with these, this product due to light caring. Awesome, so the customization is easy then. Awesome. Chris, can you tell us a little bit about a life cycle of a case and what is important to follow with the IFUs using uh, this material? Yeah, so kind of opened up the slide kind of explaining our ecosystem, right? Where we have hardware, software, and materials. Mm -hmm. But we also recognize that we need to meet our customers where they're at in their digital journey, right? So when you have the life cycle of a case, you have multiple ways that you can receive a request for a digital case, right? It can be an impression that you're gonna pour in stone and then scan, or you're gonna get an intraoral scan, uh, right? And then you're gonna design directly on top of that. So what, we, what we're looking at here is you, you get your case in, you get it into your design software of choice, right? You're gonna set up that order with 3D printing in mind. Right. So, you know, OK, this this is not milled. This is printed. Um, we provide an IFU and we're going to cover that here in a little bit about the design considerations that you know about. Right. So we're, we're trying to position this that you're in your design step. Your design is finished. You double check that you meet your minimum thickness requirements, your form, fit and function, and then integrating with our platform so that you can push that case through as easy as possible. Um, so those considerations and the IFUs are all geared around the, the, the end result. The IFUs are so important. We build these IFU workflows to, to specifically make an indication and, and give you the package to get what you want out of it. So the instructions for use give you everything. They give you, um, design considerations. They give you the print prep. So if you want to support, use the autopilot, how to prepare your printer. Um, and then specifics on finishing. So your your washing times, your curing times, how to bond them, what tools to use, all everything you need comes in that IFU. And we really take pride and really want to hammer that home. We put a lot of work into those um, because we want that to be the kickoff baseline. Hey, follow this IFU, start here. You're going to be in a great spot. It's going to get you right where you need to be able to take that to finish. Easy, reliable, safe. And consistent, right? You, right? you know, you want your cases to come out consistent every time and so that your doctors can rely on getting the same results every single time. So that's important too. Right. So do you, Matt, do you have any specific design recommendations for uh, Flexera Smile Ultra Plus? Like, like Chris was pointing on is, uh, you know, the IFUs are very important. 
you got to kind of take that in consideration and, you know, the design parameters to make it fit and, you know, have your aesthetic design to fall through with. Um, as far as your minimal thicknesses and all that, you should follow that as, you know, like right there. So, yeah, I'm good to apologies there. You like inlays and omelets, you know, like you really want to stay with that minimum thickness, you know, because uh, that's going to be considered when you got your wear and, you know, just anything just breaking, you know, it'll break easily. Um, it was pretty strong material, but you go beyond and uh, go below your parameters. It's not good for the material. Yeah, so you did the testing to make sure, right? All the, the thickness, what it should be, and everything else to follow it is just the way to go, right? Yeah. To get to get yeah. that perfect restoration every single time, that perfect yeah, print the, every single time. The instruction for use is the playbook. You follow it, you'll get the results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, all the engineers, they've been working hard on this, so it's great. Um, Ash, I wanted to ask you about the material itself as far as, like, is there any shaking needed, any rolling needed as far as to keep, you know? Yeah, since it is an FDA medical resin, you will need to um, vigorously handshake the bottle soon, once you get it, and it needs to be on the bottle roller for a minimum of 12 hours. Okay. Um, this is so all the all the ingredients in the resin mixes properly, and you come out with the right uh, shades. Also, um, don't leave it in the machine for days. Put it back in the bottle. Put it on the roller, so it's ready to be used. If you get a new bottle in, put it on the roller, just so you're ready. Um, you know, because twelve hours, you don't want to. You want to be ready, so you you just need to plan that in your in your workflow. And what about shelf life? Is there a shelf life, basically, once you open the bottle? Um, once you open the bottle, no. They're, I mean, you don't want to keep it on hand and open for a year or anything like yeah. that. But there, there is expiration dates. Probably less uh, that, right? There's right. lot numbers. There's everything that's trackable and, uh, you know, that's required for FDA approval. I want to talk a little bit, Ash, with you about printing, right? So you have the design. Now, how do we print? How do we get over to the Einstein and get that working for us? Yeah, so it's actually pretty simple. You open up our Envision One RP software. You're going to select what printer you want to print on. If you've got a fleet of printers, uh, you select your material and your, your micron layer. And you drag in your design STL. You can orient it. You can add your own supports. You can customize your own supports. But we also have an auto pipe. Uh, autopilot feature, um, just a click of a button in a matter of seconds is going to orient and place the supports on for you. Oh, and awesome. then you send it over to the printer. Uh, you want to make sure your platform is, is clean of any debris, any kind of um, stuck um, resin cured on there will damage your material tray. So you always want to make sure you're running a clean platform. And you also want to dedicate um, a material tray for Flex Aerosmile Ultra Plus. You do not want to contaminate this with any other resin. Uh, it will lose its properties. Um, and that's very important. Mm -hmm. Also, um, uh, you make sure you use the right material card. You find your job on the list and you hit play. Now, if you have if you already went ahead and preheated, good. If not, you're going to have to wait five to 10 minutes before it starts printing. Um, because it is a heated print bed, it's got to warm up. And depending how cold your lab is, it's, you know, it's just depends how long that takes. Mm -hmm. um, and once it's done, uh, you throw it in the, the alcohol uh, washer. And um, first you do a dirty bath for five minutes with Flexera Small Ultra Plus, And then you do a clean alcohol bath for two minutes. Um, and it's also important that you do not use the same dirty alcohol that you cleaned your models with. Um, you got to keep those separate. Keep your alcohol containment um, for your products separate. Um, and then uh, once it's been washed, uh, you're going to want to cure it in the auto flash. It's um, different cure times for different products, but for Flexera Small Ultra Plus, it's uh, 3,000 flashes. And then you're going to 
flip it and do 3,000 more flashes. And 3,000 flashes is just a few minutes. And how long would you say to go. print an, an arch? In the I'm sorry, say it again? How long would you say it would take to print a, a, an arch in, in the Einstein? Um, so it depends on your, your micron layers. Um, the, the more accurate you want to be is, is going to be more layers. So mm -hmm. that takes more time and it depends how you orient the part. Um, if it's vertical, it's going to take longer because it's based on the height. If right. you do it horizontal, you're going to shorten that by like 75% at least. Mm -hmm. Um, so it just depends how many you got and, and your you, workflow or your load. You can get, you can get a full build plate of denture bases on the Einstein printed in about an hour 15, hour 20. Okay. Um, if you lay them flat, it's about half that. Mm -hmm. um, tooth arches can print in 15, 20 minutes on the Einstein. Oh, um, the XL obviously is a larger build platform, um, so you can fit more on. So you're looking at like nine denture bases on an Einstein, you're about 18 on the XL. Print times are pretty close. Um, the XL might be a touch slower, maybe five or 10 minutes slower, just because it has to peel more on the bigger build platform, but roughly, you know, pretty quick. Yeah, that is, that is pretty quick. Definitely. Definitely. What I wanted to ask you now, um, Chris, why choose a desktop help, help printer like the Einstein over another printer out there? And can you explain a little bit about an open system and a closed system as it relates to the Einstein? Yeah, I love this question. Um, you know, we, we hear that a lot. We hear open system, closed system. Yeah. Um, I think we could, would consider desktop health as a closed system, right? We have some third-party resin options, but I, I kind of wanted to give a fair breakout of pros and cons for both. Um, Cause I, you know, not as interesting just to hear what we think the pros are. I think it's interesting to, to also give the cons. Mm -hmm. um, so let's look at desktop health. Um, we gear these systems to be more user-friendly um, and require less intervention and expertise up front. Um, we find this is really great for medical device manufacturing. Um, we're grouping the FDA fire filings and requirements into the workflow. So again, software, hardware, washing unit, curing unit, materials are all in the in the bundle. Um, so that we're taking that on and you can operate in that environment. Mm -hmm. Now, the cons of that are the parameters are locked, right? We set these build styles to work with the resins and the materials and the hardware to get the strength numbers, the accuracy, the things that we validate in the IFU um, all match together. Um, if you were to go outside of that, you're looking at customizing and developing those on your own. Um, we also shoot for re reliability. Again, closed systems are designed to work within itself. Um, so we try to ensure that those components are working together to reach those end specs that we need. Um, it does limit, and it, you know, customers who are looking to do one-offs or non-indicated applications makes it harder for you to do. Um, I don't recommend this in dental. I don't think at, as relevant to our space, um, but definitely in a hobbyist environment, prototyping, things like that, you definitely want to be able to do one-offs or non-indicated applications. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously support and warranties. Uh, closed systems, you know, they come with a comprehensive uh, warranty and support over your whole system. So it's not having to go to multiple manufacturers or different parties to kind of look at each individual piece of your workflow. It's all encompassed. Um, obviously, the inverse is true um, with an open system. And then material restrictions, right? And, and I think this is a good thing. Um, again, optimize for specific indications on specific materials so that you can get the reliability and consistency you want. Um, it, it limits your ability to play, um, but if you're playing around in things that aren't meant to be where they are, um, you're looking at non-validations and, and off indications and applications maybe that resin wasn't designed for. Um, so let's give the fair shake to the open printing systems. Um, they give you a wide range of parameters, temperature, speed, material selection, um, this is great for customization experimentation. 
Um, I would give a con to that is it's going to cost you a lot to do that. Um, you're going to have to have an expert, generally a steeper learning curve to learn how to put all of those pieces together. Um, you know, like we know that the, the printer itself and the curing unit are so, so crucial. Those steps of printing, washing and curing are so important to getting your final results. Um, that being able to test that at, at most operations is very difficult to say, hey, this is good. You know, you can't really just bite it or scratch your fingernail on it or try to validate it yourself. Um, we've taken that on and, and uh, acquired that cost in validating these workflows. Mm -hmm. And then the material compatibility. Uh, those open systems give you the ability to play, right? Expanding your range. Um, but you're going to hit compatibility issues. Again, the things that I really like to drive here are print quality, reliability, and throughput. Um, generally, when you're testing third-party resins or other things, you have to be conservative with your build style in order to get that quality. Uh, that means print times are going to rise. Um, generally, you're going to overexpose or those wait times are going to be extended so that you get a good peel. Um, your print quality, you're going to need to be able to dial in, you know, what angle do I need to print at? How do I know these are, layers are going to separate and fully cure? Um, and then again, validated workflows are required for medical resins. So you're looking at dentures, hemp, spinal, surgical guides, splints. I mean, gosh, you're really looking at what models and castable wax, you know, in, in the space that's not a medical resin. So yeah. um, you're really kind of strangling yourself there. And then I'll go through the last two rather quickly. Mods and upgrades. Yes, you can mod an open system. Um, you know, you want it to go faster. You want to change a light, change a board, something like that. You're totally cool. Um, you're going to avoid the warranty. Again, learning curve, expertise, reliability, reliability and support can suffer. Um, and then cost. Uh, you can look at cost advantages um, from the cost side when you open source materials and components. Um, but again, when you're looking into FDA filings, registration, registrations and validating workflows, I think there's some hidden costs there that don't show up right away. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but with a closed system, initial costs will be higher because we did all that for you. Um, we built all that in, we registered everything and we covered everything um, that is needed. So I like to say as a whole, um, open and closed systems depends on the application. But ultimately, I believe for dental, a closed and validated system is going to get you safe, accurate, cost effective parts. Um, and it's priced in such a way that the ROI makes sense, the quality is good, and you can feel confident in what you're making, and it's going to make what it's designed to do. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Ash, can you add a little bit to that as far as hardware goes? Absolutely. Uh, so what the Einstein printers have is what we call hyperprint. It's an efficient combination of heat and closed loop feedback driven by intelligent load sensors. So you can see zoomed in on the right, that is a load cell, it reads forces. So in our case, it's reading the, the peeling forces and it's making customized print layers for repeatability, quality assurance and speed. Um, we also have a built-in uh, heating bed. It lowers the resin's viscosity for quicker prints. So with the closed loop feedback, loads uh, the load cell and the built-in heating you get exceptional reliable printing and um, just just outstanding finish quality on these prints and what about uh, the updated design flow so, uh, i also want to talk about the chips oh sure printer uh so we we use a texas instrument industrial grade uh, dlp chip um some printer companies might go with the lower grade Texas Instrument DOP chip. We absolutely go with the most powerful that they have, uh, which gives us higher contrast ratios and finer details. Um, we also have, um, yeah, if you want to just skip to the next slide, please. Yep. All right, so when I was talking about the industrial grade chip, um, so our optics are designed from the ground up to reduce image distortion and ensure the maximum amount of energy is transferred from the LED light source um, 
So you can see we we harness and focus the the uh, projector through multiple lenses and mirrors, and up and out into the print bed. Um, the, this our our hardware is really what sets it apart from uh, other competitors. I see that. And what about, I was saying before, the automated design flow, automate. Can you explain yeah, so, like what is on, on the printer? Uh, yeah, so there's some automate AI designs out there. Um, it's perfectly acceptable to use. And if you want to do your single crowns, free up your designers for more complex cases, like <clears throat> exactly what we do in our facilities. Um, you just it's just a scalable solution that that can help you just produce and then the throughput on the printer you're talking about very quick print times i mean you can you can print out so many crowns on on one print platform it's and with ai it's so quick but with ai you pay for the speed so it's not just one design cost so if you want one in like 90 seconds you're going to pay more if you want one in 10 hours you pay less it just depends how quick you need it Okay, awesome. Matt, can you tell us a little bit about tips and tricks when speaking to customers about when you're doing the printing? Uh, as far as printing, sorry. Have any recommendations for the customers when it comes to printing? Uh, for post, Processing, you know, it's very important to get your, your supports and everything cleaned off right when they get out of the printer. It's easier to do it that way because as you run it through the bath, you know, the alcohol dries it out, gets a little harder. And if you cure it, it gives it that nice, that really stable cure to it where it's at its hardest force. So I like to get all your supports and stuff off before you go any further with curing. Cleaning. Something I found too, I uh, add to that, Matt, is uh, during the wash, um, I found that, like, let's say you're doing Flexera Ultra Plus and you're doing a, you know, like a temporary or final or even a try indenture. Um, I like to dry these out on the bench before curing. So mm -hmm. you go through your wash, you do your two wash steps, um, your, your supports are off, you let them dry out. Um, because as they dry out, it gets all that re residual monomer out of there and as well as gets the alcohol out of there so when you're throwing it into the curing unit to finalize it it's it's like a clean cure right and I, I really i like that tip um just to make sure you're getting it clean and getting it fully cured yeah and same with same with models if you if you're experiencing like a sticky model even after you've like cured it or it was in the cure uh, it's usually because it's just, it's too wet out of the alcohol. You got to let it air dry. Mm -hmm. And Matt, can you share any experiences as a lab expert? I mean, you, you know, this is what you do every day. Like, what are your experiences with the, with the materials and with the printer? Ease so, of use, that kind of thing. Through my time of doing this, I've had you know, experience with multiple printers, multiple mm -hmm. materials, and, you know, just especially denture materials uh, with these, with the, you know, Flexera base and the small ultra plus, you know, even with the new updated version. So you could see the clear difference each time it comes out, you know, a lot of other materials, you didn't see that. So for example, like, you know, our, the original base we got, you know, kind of has a sticky, uh, tacky uh, feeling to it until it's fully cured and uh, finished. The newer base material that's going to be coming out, or I don't know if it's released yet, but it's just we'll like that. trying. It's like the Smile Ultra Plus. It's it's completely smooth. It's easy to finish. You know, it's just you know the updated materials are really working nicely. That's great. Now, Desktop Health is constantly innovating. Can you give us a look into the future of this resin? Yeah, so I brought up this screen here, and like we affectionately call this division like the advanced dental resins, right? So you can see the Flexera portfolio, you know, the Legacy E Guide, Smile Guard model materials, and kind of to tie this back in the beginning. We're trying to make that transition to that additive manufacturing 2.0, right? So end use, end use, 
Uh, and that goes with developing and bringing out better resins, better material properties, taking advantage of the features that Ash mentioned that sets us apart uh, actually allows us to unlock some additional indications, applications, and performance. So what we're looking at here and what Matt mentioned is our Flexera Base Ultra Plus. Um, and this is a resin that we've tried to increase the material properties across the board. Um, it really has been an ac accumulation of feedback on Flexera Base. So mm -hmm. we're looking at uh, you know stronger in terms of the work fracture. We're looking at better water resistance. We're looking at better wear resistance. Um, we're also looking at better shades, better colors, more aesthetics. Again, something that Ash touched on was that heated print bed, which I always like to really drive home. When you print things at temperature, at heat, it allows you to increase those material properties. It, it unlocks some of the processes in printing that allows us to mess with these formulations, whether it's adding in more ceramic load, um, changing up that recipe a little bit, or not as limited by the, the resin getting too viscous. You know, you can heat that up, make it more watery, and now we can print it easier, better, faster, more accurate, right? Um, so I like to talk about that with the resins, but then I also kind of want to mention the automation and the future integrations with the software, mm -hmm. um, because I like to make this as like a, a railroad track analogy. We know automation's coming, digital is pushing us, and we're building this platform, we're calling it a cloud platform. Um, and it's online, like I said, but it's bringing every, everything in one. So the nesting and RP software is online, your fleet management and your printer management with your print metric and your data, uh, online, offline, job status, and then moving the education, the academy, knowledge base and support ticket all into one space. The reason why we're doing this is so that workflow, if you think about the case we talked about earlier, you want to have your work and your processes, your employees or the people working on the cases doing dental. So once you get the scan in and your design done, you want to drop your manufacturing into one place that allows the automation to cruise. It, it doesn't take very much thought to think about what might be coming in the future with automation, right? With hardware additions, software additions, different components to that. But you have to have the, the, the groundwork and the framework of the software to allow those units to function, right? So we're really focusing on bringing that system together so that we're, I don't want to say future proofing, but in a way, think of it like that, right? Give us that railroad track the baseline to be laid so that we can plug these things in as they come. That ties back to meeting the customer at their digital journey, right? If you're a new user and just looking to hop in, it's simplified. If you're an experienced user or an expert that's looking to add on automations and integrations, we want to have that platform so that you can plug in and we'll meet you where you are. Excellent. Well, that's a good sneak peek into what's going to be coming straight from desktop health to the laboratory community. And we're so excited to see all of this. Um, I'm sure you'll be making some announcements in Chicago and we look forward to ha having you join, um, all of you join in our ballroom, E and F. We also have Jack Morano who will be speaking on um, Absolute's behalf on how they have integrated uh, Flexera Smile Ultra Plus into their laboratory and what it's meant um, to them over an absolute. So that'll be uh, an exciting lecture for everybody to join and be able to see an end user uh, like absolute um, using this great resin and these great printers um, in their laboratory successfully. So take a look at the LMT uh, website in order uh, to sign up for us because we'd love to have you join us. Um, we do have some questions. So if that's okay, guys, I will start answering some of those. Um, Kenneth would like to know, how do you create a tooth shade gradient from gingiva to occlusal? Yeah, that was um, the one where I mentioned the thickness, of course. So naturally okay. it's built in uh, the ceramic load as you go from a thicker part of the tooth at the gingival down to the incisal edge naturally gets thinner. So it allows more of the light to penetrate through and more of the ceramic qualities to, to shine through. 
Um, but then also you can add additional gradient um, shading with UV curable uh, light kits like GC Optiglaze, uh, right? Anything that you traditionally would use on PMMA um, would work there. I have a little tip there. Um, it's best to use, follow the IFU for the stain and glaze kit for curing. So cure your Flexera Smile Ultra Plus with the Auto Flash or the cure box that you're using in the IFU. And then when you go to stain and glaze, use the prescribed light source in the IFU for the, the stain and glaze kit, if that makes sense. Yeah. That'll give you the best results because what you're going to get is different wavelengths and different light sources can darken and lighten different shade kits, right? So you, it's very important to match that wavelength to your stain and glaze kit. So for instance, we use GC Optiglaze at our lab group, and then we use the Lab Light Duo for curing that stain and glaze on because the IFU for Optiglaze recommends curing times for GC. It's a perfect match. And hey. and it, since Flexera Small Ultra Plus has ceramics in the resin itself, just naturally it gets translucent as it gets thin at the incisal edge as well. Next question Kenneth has is, um, what is the wear of opposing occlusal dentition using Flexera? Depends on what you're opposing. Uh, generally, we know that zirconia is super hard, right? So soft one loses. Um, but no, the, the wear resistance here in the studies we did was metal, right? So that, and, and regulating and, and comparing back and forth. The, the wear of the opposing is the wear study. Um, so we're seeing very good performance in, in terms of occlusal wear. Um, natural dentition does great. Um, you know, obviously those results are, are meant to mimic opposing dentition. So th those hold true. And he would also like to know, is there a residual taste or smell? No, not at all. That's actually a main part of the FDA um, and our filings with the materials. So uh, that's where these important IFU tips and tricks come in, getting those wash times correct, making sure you're finishing in a clean bath, getting them dry, making sure you're curing properly. Um, another tip there is keep an eye on your auto flash, um, your box. I've been to a lot of labs and a lot of practices that that box is absolutely covered in resin and, and blocking the light from being able to cure. Um, if that box is dirty, you're not fully curing. Um, if you're still smelling or tasting something, you're probably not curing fully. So I would look there first. Okay, great. Jeffrey would like to know uh, something about his roller. It stopped working and he was told the cause of this was because it was continuously being used. Should he only roll 12 hours before needed to use the resin or should he just continually get another one and just keep doing the same thing? I would still recommend just keeping that roller going. Um, it sounds like maybe something happened to that unit there. Um, definitely take care of that on the back end. But no, we recommend keeping those those bottles rolled. 12 hours is a pretty big window. Uh, we, at our lab, we we roll them all the time. We just have a lineup of rollers and we just keep them humming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jeffrey also wants to notice, where do you change the layer height on the Einstein? That's it's pretty much built into each individual build style. So you can select different build styles to use for that. And it'll give you a different micron layering. You know, there's 50, there's 175. Yeah, and it, it, it also, it depends on the resin you're using. Um, you know, they not all resins have every single micron layer available. So that's that's part of our closed system. So we we know what that micron layer should be for the best results possible. And if you're looking for that specific build style at a different layer height, they're all on the knowledge base. So you'll go to your printer if you have an Excel or an Einstein, go to that section in the knowledge base, and there'll be a build style folder um, with all the build styles. And they all end in their Z height name. So Smile Ultra Plus 50 micron, 100 micron. They're, they're in the name of the build style. Jeffrey also wants to know, does Desktop Health plan on validating any third-party resins at this time? Yes. Um, so we have a few now. Um, that are already validated in our portfolio. Um, yes, we're always continuing to look at what resins we can do 
um, better, faster, cheaper. Um, I think what you're going to see is the medical resins take a little bit of time um, because there's a lot to go into making those safe to put in the body. Um, so anything medical related, um, yes, absolutely. We'd love to expand. I'd just like to mention too that Flexera Small Ultra Plus and base is validated on the carbons. Yeah. And his next question is, does Desktop Health plan to come out with any economical try-in resin for full dentures? Sure. Yeah, always looking at especially the ROIs and the cost per parts there um, and trying to get something that makes sense. Absolutely, yeah, we'd love to uh, validate some of those things. I think what we like to keep in mind too is workflow. Um, so I think you'll notice on a lot of the units, if you're working with multiple <clears throat> resins, you're looking at multiple baths, you're looking at multiple tanks. Um, so there's a workflow consideration there too in how can we balance a multi-versatile resin that doesn't lead you into downtime, right? And specifically, I mean, if you're gonna run a job of denture teeth, then you wanna run a job of try-in, and then you wanna run a job of denture bases, that's three different tanks, three different wash setups. Um, so there's a workflow consideration there too, but absolutely, yes, we're always looking at um, more economical solutions. Awesome. I just launched another poll, and this one is, would you like to incorporate desktop health system, including Flexera Smell Ultra Plus, to your 3D printing workflow? So if you would like somebody to get in touch with you and you're really thinking about this, um, we can absolutely help you. A Zon representative would get in touch with you, absolutely, or you can contact your Zon representative to learn more and to see how easy it is for us to help you get this system um, into your laboratory and get, get you started printing with uh, desktop health. We do have uh, numerous different types of financial um, plans that can help you as well, one of them being Route 66. And Route 66 offers no payments for six months and no interest accrued as well. So we get you what you need to get you up and running um, and help you make your laboratory get to the next level for sure. So I wanna thank everybody here for joining me today on a look in the lab. Um, desktop, great partner, great manufacturer. And I think we have one more question, so let's see. Two more. Oh, there was one, two more that came up. I don't know why I'm not able to see it. So, Chris, if you're, oh, here we go. My roller was the Envision Tech MX6 Pro, and Desktop Health told me it was not in use for nonstop. Should I be confused? Maybe you can help him with that. Yeah, why don't you reach out to us? Um, and we can help you get squared away there. Like I mentioned earlier, I think you may be having an issue with your roller. Um, so maybe we can try to dive into what is going on there with that particular unit. We're using that same roller um, in our lab group and we run them nonstop. So perfectly able to help you there um, with that. Sounds like there might be something going on with that one. And Jeffrey also wants to know, he's you know not sure if he would want an Asiga or an Einstein. So how does the Einstein compare to the Asiga? Yeah, so a little, little bit of a, um, sheet here of a comparison. Um, what we're looking at with the Asiga is more of an open system. Um, they do have validated re resins and printers, but what you're not getting there is CLP and heated print, and heated print beds. Uh, print times on the Asigas are slower and drastically slower. Um, so when you're looking at throughput considerations, um, you're going to suffer there. Um, accuracy, um, they're pretty much dead even. Um, not going to see anything really different there. Um, I think where we try to stand apart is with the portfolio. So if you come into the desktop health platform, you have a full portfolio of resins. You have the legacy prototyping resins that I mentioned before, Caspa wax, model resins. But then you have the full portfolio of advanced dental resins. So you're looking at denture teeth, temps, finals. Um, venture bases, splints, surgical guides. You have everything in that ecosystem, all desktop health, all validated, all verified, um, one-stop shop. 
With a SEGA, I think you're looking at mixing and matching different workflows, different customers, different materials. Um, so that would be the main comparisons for me that I'm looking at um, through your yeah. throughput. I just want to bring up too, the Einstein Pro XL is a 4K printer. The other, if you look, if you look at that line there, there's no other companies that have a 4K printer. And if you look at that build area, it's the largest build area in the dental space as far as how many prints you can get done at once. Okay, thank you so much for your answers to all of these questions. And I wanna thank everybody for their questions. We appreciate that. And answering our polls, being interactive with us. I wanna thank Chris, Ash, and Matt for joining us today and Desktop Health. Um, for sharing all of their information with us. And I just wish everybody a wonderful, wonderful day. And thank you for joining us for our first webinar of 2024. We look so forward to you catching up with us next week. Um, we have what's coming up next. Um, Palm 117 is we're going to be taking a look inside of Iverson Dental Laboratory out of California. And they're going to be talking to us about how the auto finish, which is a polishing unit, changed the way that they polish in their laboratory for the better. So check us out next Wednesday, 117 with Iverson Dental Lab. Thank you so much for joining us guys again, and we appreciate all of you. Have a great day, everybody.